Bayesian regression relies on Bayesian model averaging, meaning that we work with uh, predictive distributions that are parameterized with a set of model weights, and we will take a weighted average over all possible models, weighted with the corresponding posterior distribution for the model parameters. So, um, so far we have mainly focused on obtaining these posterior distributions, but not really looked much into what the predictive distributions actually look like. Now, that's what we're going to do in this video. Okay, uh, the setting is again as always, so we have these observed inputs, so these x1 up to xn, we can uh, put them all into one big data matrix, and we have corresponding observed target variables t1 up to tn, so this is one big factor of length. N. Now our goal is to come up with a predictive distribution, meaning that if we are given a new x prime, what would be the probability of the corresponding target value? And we model these predictive distributions to be Gaussians, um, and this is our modeling approach where we uh, these Gaussians are centered around a mean, uh, which is uh, basically given by our, our model, which maps an input x prime to the corresponding mean value. And this model is parameterized by a W. And then around this mean, we have some uncertainty. This is usually a hyperparameter uh, beta. Now recall that in this predictive and in, in this modeling setting, uh, this is really considered a distribution with respect to T prime. But when we're talking about uh, optimizing the W parameters, we typically treat this as a likelihood function with respect to W. So given my all my observed data, uh, I can fix this probability and optimize over w and that gives me a likelihood function. But now we're treating it as a predictive distribution which is parameterized by a particular w. And then we can choose these w's, right? So a one a set of parameters is more appropriate than others and uh, how appropriate a set of parameters is, is quantified by, a, by the posterior distribution. So the posterior distribution really describes the probability that W should take on a particular value given that I've observed all my data points so far and given some modeling hyperparameters. Right, so this posterior distribution was a combination of a prior, my prior assumption or prior belief what the weights should be and the likelihood of my data uh, being generated by uh, such a distribution. Now, and in the previous videos, we then saw that if we have a likelihood, which is a normal distribution, if we have a prior, which is a normal distribution, then also my posterior will be a normal or a Gaussian distribution with a mean for which we have a closed form expression and a covariance matrix, which we can also analytically compute. Now, the main idea of uh, Bayesian regression is that we're not going to make a point estimate for W, which is we're not going to pick one W, but we're going to average over all my models uh, where we weight each model with the corresponding posterior distribution. So really the, the probability uh, of this model being a good good model. Okay, so that looks like this. My, my final predictive distribution then no longer depends on W because this is uh, marginalized out. And we do this as follows. So we have these predictive distributions for uh, the t prime, so the probability that t prime should take on some value, given, uh, well, my mapping of x prime to this this mean, and some precision parameter beta. So this is one particular predictive distribution parameterized by w, and we're going to weight it with the corresponding uh, with a posterior distribution for w. Um, which is the probability for W after having observed all my data points and after having set my uh, hyperparameters alpha and W. So we're going to take a weighted average so we integrate over all possible model parameters. Now, and this is again really the nice thing about working with Gaussian distributions is that also this integral will result in a Gaussian distribution. And that is, that is nicely derived in uh, Bishop, uh, the book of Bishop in chapter 2.3. And so also for that, we have a nice formula. So the resulting integral, so the resulting predictive distribution will again be a Gaussian distribution for uh, the parameter t prime given by my uh, input mapping. So my basis function evaluated for the input data point product with uh, my mean and it has a particular standard deviation sigma squared. 
So my predictive distribution will again be a normal distribution, a Gaussian distribution, which has a particular mean. And this mean is obtained by taking the mean of my posterior, which I derived from the prior and uh, the likelihood. Uh, so given this design matrix and the covariance matrix computed in the following way. So it can be computed via this mean uh, and then the scalar product with the feature values uh, for uh, x prime. So the basis function vector evaluated at uh, x prime. And also here we have uh, a closed form expression for what uh, the standard deviation uh, sigma n squared for this data point is going to be. And that is given by 1 over beta plus my basis function uh, vector with the covariance matrix times my basis function vector. So at this point, I don't really expect you to, to memorize all these, these formulas, how to combine um, the, these Gaussian distributions. But the main point to remember here that as long as you work with Gaussian distributions, uh, so we have a Gaussian for the prior, for the likelihood, uh, this will give you a Gaussian for the posterior, and then also this kind of integrals between two Gaussians, uh, it will also give you a Gaussian distribution. And it is possible to derive the exact um, uh, solutions for what the, the, the means and the, the variances of these distributions uh, are going to be. And this is all nicely derived in the book of Bishop at chapter 2.3. So really take a look at that chapter to get a feeling of how, where these equations come from. So the mean of the covariance we saw before was given in this way. And now I give a new expression for uh, the, the standard deviation of the resulting uh, predictive distribution. Now, and also here we can have a quick look at what, what happens if I take the limit from n to infinity. So basically after having observed an infinite amount of data, then we see that this term will go to zero because we saw that the covariance matrix Sn will tend to go to zero because this term will become very large. And then so the, we see S inverse here. So this thing will become the zero matrix. So this term will go to zero in the limit n goes to infinity. So in the limit, my variance is given by one over beta, which was really my noise, my intrinsic noise on the data. There's not, nothing I can do about this. So that's then the best you can do. And that's the, the most certain you can be with your predictions uh, in the end. Okay, then let's have a look at what this looks like in practice. So. Here we again have the simulated experiments with the sine 2 pi of x plus some noise uh, and we generate data points with it. So here we have one particular data point and now we're going to fit a predictive distribution uh, to it. So we're going to use this, uh, this model, so really a linear model with basis functions. Uh, for this particular example, we're going to use Gaussian basis functions. Okay, so we have a bunch of Gaussian basis functions and we're going to use it to construct this, this red curve over here. So this is a y of x parameterized by w. Okay, and then, then I just showed you on the previous slide that my predictive distribution is again going to be a Gaussian distribution, right? So we can analytically compute this thing. So we can compute the mean uh, given by uh, this formula, which we saw before, and actually we have to uh, take the, the scalar product with my feature vector at this uh, x prime to get the eventual mean. So this is just one scalar value. Uh, so it's one scalar value uh, somewhere along this vertical axis. And that gives you the mean prediction. And then there's uncertainty on this uh, prediction. And this uncertainty is uh, given via this uh, variance. So sigma n squared in the following form. And these variances are plotted here. So with these... Uh, pink shaded area. So this is um, sigma n. So it's plus and one plus plus and minus one uh, standard deviation, which is plotted here. And what you see, what you see if you plot this is that the standard deviation around my measured data point is small. But if I move away from these data points, my, my variance increases. So this is really a nice property of, of Bayesian uh, predictive distributions that I have higher certainty around data points which makes sense. And if I move away from the data point, my uncertainty increases. And so um, we cover several cases here. So this is if I only have one data point. This is if I have uh, two data points, the NS4 case. And if I have 25 data points, 
I have this distribution which is really a strong confidence all over uh, the interval because well I, I have this many data points. So, so we see two things. So on the one hand side we see that the variance uh, start to decrease because I have more data points. So these bands, so these uncertainty of intervals become smaller. But I also see that my model starts to better approximate my ground truth. So the red was my, my model and uh, like the average of my predictions and green was my uh, ground truth. Yeah, and you see that if I have little data points, my model doesn't come close to my uh, ground truth. If I have more data points, it starts to converge to the, the ground truth. And really with more and more data points, it comes closer. Uh, so in these cases, the bias, both the bias is, is large. So I make errors because my model doesn't approximate the ground truth, but also my variance among models is large. And we actually see, see that in the next slide uh, as well. Okay, so we see that these confidence integral intervals will be smaller around my data points. Right? So there's less uncertainty in my predictions around data points. And this uncertainty, this uncertainty is reflected via sigma squared. So my uh, standard deviation via the formula, following formula. And now you can mathematically show that indeed around such data points for x primes that are close to data points, to points in my data, uh, that I get a, a small, um, a smaller variance by analyzing this component and the particular covariance matrix. Now this is quite technical and maybe it's not too relevant at this point. It's, I think it's more important to stick with intuition here. And the intuition is that so far we've seen that the posterior, so the probabilities for my weights, get sharper and sharper uh, with more data that I observed. And here I observe data, so here I have a better, stronger confidence of what my weight parameters or what my model parameters should be. So here I'm going to rely on data. But this posterior was a combination of a prior and my prior assumption and the likelihood based on observations. And in regions where I haven't observed data, I have to rely on my prior. And my prior says, um, okay, I have, I have a guess it should, should be a particular set of Ws, but I'm not fully certain. So that's my prior. And that's why I see a lot of uncertainty here. And in this case, I can actually update my prior belief with things that I observed. So around my data points, my confidence intervals uh, will uh, be smaller. Okay, so the main takeaway from this slide is that my predictive distributions are going to be Gaussians and I can analytically compute how these Gaussians are parameterized, so with the mean and a corresponding uh, standard deviation. And then I see two things. First of all, I see that the uncertainty is smaller near data points. And I think this is a really nice property of, of uh, Bayesian distributions, uh, Bayesian predictive distributions. And then I see a second thing. I see that the overall uncertainty decreases with larger n. So basically, the more data I gather, the more confident I will be in my predictions. Now, another way of looking at uncertainty is actually draw, uh, actually plot my uh, distributions from the posterior. So we have obtained this posterior. We did this uh, actually before, um, but now we're going to plot it again for this uh, sign example. So after having observed all my data points, I have a posterior probability that my weights should take on a particular uh, value. And again, this posterior uh, will be a Gaussian and we can analytically compute what the mean and the covariance matrix uh, will be. Now, if I have only one data point, it will give me a very wide uh, posterior distribution. So it's not really specific or certain on a particular point. And then you see that all these models, yeah, they look very different, but they mostly tend to agree on this data point. So they know, okay, this comes from my distribution, so I should be closer to that one. But for the rest part, I can do whatever I want. And then I have two data points. We see indeed a lot of variation among these distributions, uh, but they tend to come close to the data points. And this actually explained also this behavior, right? So this red is really, this red shaded region is really the indication that my model, whatever my model is, it will probably go to these red shaded regions. Uh, and if I have more data points, these regions shrink. And you see that, so if I have more data points, my solutions tend to come closer, closer and closer to each other converging to the data points. And if I have more and more and more data points, 
uh, well, we see less and less variation among my uh, solutions. Okay, yeah, so I should have written this. So we sample from this distribution and then we plot the corresponding model y x parameterized by this uh, set of weights. Okay, so in this video we saw that with these Bayesian predictive distributions we can talk about uncertainty in our solutions. So we can either uh, directly plot the uncertainty with these plus, plus one, minus one variance confidence intervals uh, where okay my solution is likely to occur within this interval um, but we could also visualize this by really looking at all these individual solutions and we see that we have a lot of variation uh, among them.